sucking all you luck. Going harder than me. And that's how you assert dominance. Hey what's up guys, it's JKK Tag, and today we're coming at you with the 12 win golem deck. So this golem deck has a little bit of a poison bait element, you either have the goblin hunt or the electro wizard and you want to space them out so your opponent's not able to poison them both on defense. And if your opponent's running a P.E.K.K.A deck, all you really gotta do is keep your electro wizard or your spear goblin hunt alive, either one of them, and it's gonna be very hard for your opponent's P.E.K.K.A to ever reach your tower. So I put together this deck today and I ran it in a GC, got a nice juicy 12 win, let's jump right into the chest. And please give me that Royal Ghost because we do not have it maxed out yet. We're hitting that 1 million gold. I know you guys are probably raging a little bit inside. What is he doing with his life still playing GCs when he's maxed out? It's actually a really good way of me practicing. I get to play against all the very common decks in the meta. And I feel like it's pretty solid for me. So we're getting the Chief Pat Rockets. We're getting the Skill Horde. The Goblin Hut. We love the Stevens, the Spear Goblins. And we actually don't have Zappies maxed out. So that's pretty awesome get in the minions, and we're actually gonna pull a legendary in addition to hunters. So guys, this is gonna be a pretty phenomenal chest. I know I was saying that I wasn't getting anything out of chests. I'm actually getting so much out of this chest. Gonna get a graveyard for the meme, guys. Graveyard is one of my favorite archetypes at the moment, so it kinda does make sense that we pull the graveyard out of this chest. Not too bad, not too shabby of a chest. 11 hunters and some zappies, I'll definitely take that. All right, guys, so we got a game against someone very mysterious. Unfortunately, we do not have the Spear Goblin Hut. That is going to be the most optimal maneuver to start off the game with that. We're just going to be cycling a bandit in the back, and we want to see what's up. I don't actually like dropping my bandit at the bridge because he could drop his own bandit, and that would be kind of annoying for us to deal with. So we're going to be dropping our Dark Prince. We already have a bandit on the map. So we're going to be down three Elixir, but he's actually going to have to deal with a bandit and a Dark Prince. So he's going to be down in Elixir in this interaction after dropping the Musketeer and the Ice Golem. If the bandit gets on top of the Musky, that would be, be really nice for us. And the Dark Prince, oh, he just spanked him a little bit. So we're going to be up enough Elixir for me to justifiably drop my Golem. In most situations, you kind of got to wait until double Elixir. Or if you're up a ton of Elixir, then you can actually drop the Golem in this instance. But I really... I notice how much I'm up, guys. We're at 7 Elixir. We're about to hit 8, and then he drops his Cannon. So he's in a really bad situation. We could end up poisoning that, but I kind of want to wait for a Musketeer. We're going to poison the Musky. We're not really going to care too much about the Cannon. The Cannon's going to get disintegrated by the Golem. Golem's going to put in some work. We're going to go in with the Bandit. We're going to get ready for the Skeletons that are about to be dropped. And, yep, there we go. So the Skeletons are going to die. Bandit's going to go on top of the Cannon, actually. I really wanted that to get on top of the Tower, so that was well played out of him. But the Golemites are still exploding. Golemites are putting in the work right there, bringing in the pain. All we got to do is drop the Goblin Hut, get ready for his Hog Rider. Hog Rider's going to get pulled to the Goblin Hut, so we really don't care. He's going to Fireball. He's going to get a little bit more damage, but guys, Stevens, oh, the Stevens are just accruing so much damage in the left-hand lane already. How do you guys feel about the Stevens? Do you guys really hate this card? Do you hate the Goblin Hut? I know I put it in almost every single deck. It's just such a solid card at the moment that I, I feel like I would just be, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't be playing the game that's meant to be played without the Spear Goblin Hut. I've always had the mentality of hate the game, not the player. So if someone's running an OP deck, I feel like, you know, just let him do it. That's It's meant to be. We're going to be dropping the Bandit, and the Bandit's going to finesse. In the, it's actually going to get on, right on top of the... No, it didn't get right on top of the tower. The Fireball just denied all damage. Steven's still accruing more damage in the left-hand lane. We're going to be dropping our Goblin Hut after leaking a little bit of Elixir, but it's still going to be fine. If you leak like one second of Elixir and double Elixir, it's usually not the best situation, but uh, <laughs> it, it's not going to hurt us in this, uh, in this environment. So the Electro Wizard on the Musketeer will prevail. We're going to be dropping a Bandit as well. And that Bandit's going to get all right on top of the tower. So, actually, no, it's going to go right into a cannon, unfortunately. But I still think this is going to be a really great situation for us. All we got to do is drop the Goblin Hut, get prepared for a Hog Rider. And if he wants to drop his Musketeer near his tower, be my guest, sir. We will definitely take that. That's a snack and a half. Skeletons actually are going to go in top or right into that as well. So, we're just going to go drop our Electro. Hog Rider still went towards that Goblin Hut. And... He's probably a very sad panda right now. We're just going to be dropping our bandit. We're going to be dropping our mega minion. We don't really want to do too much. We kind of just want to poison cycle him at this point. It doesn't really make sense to go in hot with the golem. Spear goblins are actually coming in clutch right there with the damage. So all we got to do is one more. That's all we need in life, guys. We have simple needs. It's just one more poison. We're actually going to go in for a zap to allow the Steven to potentially get one more hit. But he went in for a hog rider. He got one hit. No, he got two hits on the right hand side. I can't discount that second hit, guys. What am I doing with my life? I gotta, I gotta learn simple addition. We're gonna go in for a poison to assert the dominance and we're gonna move on to the next game. Good game, sir. 
All right, guys, so we got another game against Henrique, and we're going to be saucing out the bandit in the back looking at our situation. We have the Dark Prince approaching in our hand, but we don't actually have it in our hand immediately. It's going to pump up. So I've been seeing a lot of Golem decks without a big spell. I really think that you need to have poison, or you need to have some way of killing collectors and actually doing some damage to towers and in clutch situations, I feel like Zap just isn't enough. I've been seeing a lot of Golem decks with Zap and Pump, and it just doesn't make sense to me. I know that some people are able to pull it off, it's just not my type of style of Golem though. So Dark Prince is going to go end up finessing the Witch. He's going to be dropping a Lumberjack as well, so it's looking like he's probably running a Golem deck with Witch, Lumberjack, and Pump. Interesting type of Golem though. So we're going to be dropping our Goblin Hut. The Goblins will end up finessing the Lumberjack, so the Lumberjack will not be chopping away on top of our Spear Goblin Hut. And Stevens, oh, they're putting in the pain in the right-hand lane. And what we're going to do is we're just going to sauce out a Golem. We're going to go same lane as them. We really don't want to mix things up too much because we want to actually have our Golem tank for the Spear Goblins. So then the Spear Goblins are able to accumulate behind our Golem and rack up massive damage on top of him. So he's going to go in for the poison. Notice what I was talking about earlier, right? So I'm able to drop the Electro Wizard off to the side. And then the Electro Wizard is not going to get hit by the poison. It's going to slow down the Golem. And we're just going to be able to make sure that our uh, our towers are able to provide as much utility as possible. Just the Electro Wizard damage isn't the biggest thing. It's just having it on defense and slowing down. That's the biggest element of the Electro Wizard. That's the thing that I actually derive my value from it. So Dark Prince coming in. Dark Prince is going to get on top of the tower. The Electro Wizard is going to be slowing everything down as well on offense. So uh, this man might, might actually get three crown. Dominance is being asserted today. Dark Prince reigning in the pain. Mega Minion getting on top of the tower. Oh, this is disastrous for Henrique. So we're just going to go Goblin Hut. I kind of want to three crown him. I don't really want to ease up on this man. You know, I'm kind of about the no... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm about the no mediocre life. I'm such a bully, but uh, we got to do it. We got to three crown him. So he's down a lot of Elixir. He ended up dropping that when we were at seven Elixir. And <laughs> I mean, we already had a Goblin Hut on the field. So we are at least, at least up two Elixir in that situation. So... We're going to be dropping our Mega Minion off to the side and we're getting ready. We know that he's probably going to go in for another poison. I would assume so, unless he's learned his lesson. Yeah, no, he's going in for a poison. So we're just going to go drop our Dark Prince. The poison of ours is actually going to just encapsulate the Witch, the Mega Minion, just about everything of his. So uh, that's not great for him. That Spear Goblin Hut just gives me so much value. And we're going to end up 3 crowning Henrique. Henrique, I'm sorry to say it is not your day, sir. So... We're just going to go in for the poison, which is going to give him nothing. He's trying to... That's a desperation play if I've ever seen it. Poisoning a golem. Good game, well played, and good luck in the rest of your challenge, Henrique. All right, guys, so bouncing into the next game, we're going to be dropping our bandit in the back, and he's going to be saucing out the Lava Hound. So unfortunately, we do not have any anti-air answers in our hand. So what we're going to do is to compensate for that, we're going to be dropping the Dark Prince and the bandit at the bridge. Bandit should actually make sure that, yeah, he's going to go drop a whole bunch of squishy units, and the Dark Prince is just going to kill them. Should have actually went in for a zap. I didn't think Skarmia was going to do so well in that situation. I repent for that action, man. I uh, definitely should have dropped a zap there. And we're going to drop a poison on top of the uh, the minion horde. We're going to be dropping a mega minion to make sure the lava hound does not get a ton of damage. And we're able to clean up the pups a little bit faster. He's going to be dropping minions right into that. That was really interesting. I was not expecting that at all. Let's go pressure with bandit and see what he has for it. We're going to be trying to go for a bandit because we know that the Mega Minion would give us zero utility. And when the Mega Minion's at that health, you always want to have something in front of it if you can afford to. We made sure that he ended up having to drop a Fireball. In that instance, he wouldn't have had to drop anything for the Mega Minion, but he had to drop a Fireball for the bandit, resulting in a negative one trade for him. So uh, definitely a great situation for us. I'm going to go drop my Goblin Hut, and we're just going to try to push with the Dark Prince, I guess. And we know that he's going to go pump up, so... Hopefully the Spear Goblin gets a few more hits. So we actually got two hits. Usually a Spear Goblin in regular circumstances only gets one hit. We're going to do an even trade with the Poison on the pump. And he's probably going to go sauce out the Lava Hound after we go in for the Poison. A little bit unfortunate for us, but there's not too much we can do in this situation. We're going to just try to defend the Lava Hound for the best of our ability. We're going to hold our Electro Wizard and the Zap because we know that he has Minion Horde in Cycle. You always have to be cognizant of what cards they have in Cycle and you got to hold counters. So he's going to go drop his Balloon. Unfortunately, I'm going to go drop my Electro Wizard, and we might want to try to cycle back to a Poison. We're going to go zap the, uh, we're going to go zap that immediately, and the Balloon will get two hits maybe on the tower. The Electro Wizard decided to do, oh, he did me dirty. Why would he go in the right hand? Why would he just go walk away? He's just like, you know what, Jake, that tower is not my job, not my responsibility. Get that out of my face. So, a little bit unfortunate for us, but you know, we're still chilling, we're still doing okay. 
All we gotta do is take that tower, and that's uh, that's a pretty easy ask, actually. So we're gonna go drop our Electro, we're gonna go drop our Bandit, we're gonna get our Zap ready. We're gonna get our Zap ready for the Skarmie that's gonna be dropped. We're gonna Zap it immediately, the Bandit gets on top of the tower, and that is gone. So that tower is gone from the world, our Mega Minion is still alive and thriving, and he's gonna go try to accumulate as many units as possible behind that uh, Law Bound. So what we wanna do is we're gonna go drop our Mega Minion, we wanna go drop our Poison. Poison will actually make sure that those minions die as soon as possible. We're gonna go drop our Electro as well. And I think that we'll be able to bounce back in this game despite the really rocky start. So he's continuously going in for fireballs and he's just trying to chip away with that, I guess. We're gonna be dropping our Spear Goblin Hut and we know that he's probably gonna go in for a Skarmie relatively soon. So we might wanna go drop a Dark Prince. Actually, all right, this guy is crazy. What a wild one. We're gonna be going in hot in the left-hand lane. We could have went for the three crown actually, but rather not, rather go with his two pumps and then make him go for potentially a 3-crown, or if he defends the golem, then all of his units that he's defending with go in a lane that do not matter, so that's always something to look forward to. We're going to be dropping the Dark Prince, we're going to be dropping our Mega Minion as well, we're going to be going in for the Zap, so then the Spear Goblins are able to get so much damage off on top of those minions. He's going in for a Balloon, but does that Balloon actually matter when we have so many Spear Goblins in the entire parade push in the left-hand lane? I don't think so at all. That's going to be a good game. Well played, and good luck in the rest of your challenge, dude. He's a sad panda. He's really pissed right now, actually. <laughs> All right, guys. So we've got a game against LJ, and we actually have Bandit. So we're going to be cycling that in the back, and we want to see what he's up to. Sharks Esports. So he's a shark. Uh, a little bit scary, man. I don't really like that type of animal. <laughs> we're going to be dropping the Spear Goblins, and the Bandit's actually going to go and finesse the Prince. So that's solid for us. Notice how the Prince charge did not actually go off on the Bandit. That's always a very interesting interaction that always plays out for us. So I've never really understood it. But it, it quite it often happens with the Dark Prince and the regular Prince. So he's going for a zap on top of our Mega Minion. And he's down a considerable amount of Elixir. So what we're going to do is we're going to pressure with the Dark Prince. We really don't want to start a Golem just yet. We want to see what he's up to. So he's going to go sauce out the Mega Minion and an Electro Wizard. That's a heavy investment. That's 7 Elixir for just the Dark Prince. So all we want to do is sauce out our own Electro Wizard. Could actually drop a Bandit as well to make sure that we completely eradicate that Electro Wizard. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to have a really nice clean counter push with an electro so uh just trading biding our time until double elixir guys that's really what you want to be doing with this deck you really don't want to be investing too much until you can actually adequately get down a golem when you get down that golem then you can sauce out so many supporting units behind it the golem tanks for everything you kind of just win the game from that standpoint so survive until double elixir or until you get a huge elixir advantage drop the golem and then you actually just stack units behind it. That's usually how Golem decks work. In this case, you're able to play very passively with the Spear Goblin Hut and Electro Wizard, so you're able to actually make sure that you defend really well until then. So we know that he has Giant in this situation, so I'd much rather prefer to drop my Golem if, uh, if I actually knew that he was gonna go drop that earlier. Now we're gonna drop our Golem and we're gonna try to actually kill his Giant and have a really nice counter push. We might eat up a little bit of damage, but in the meantime, all we got to do is make sure that we kill the giant. So we're going to be dropping our Electro, and we're going to be making sure to go drop our Bandit as soon as possible as well. So unfortunately, the Prince will get a ton of damage, but this is probably one of the worst possible situations. Having a huge Elixir deficit and then just not being able to break through is a pretty bad situation for us. So now we're in a little bit better of a situation that was all catalyzed. That entire interaction was catalyzed because we had to drop the Dark Prince early on. We just didn't know if he was going to run Giant opposite side or not. So, rather be safe than sorry. We're going to go drop our Dark Prince right now. We're going to be dropping our Electro Wizard outside of the Poison. And now, since we're up a little bit more Elixir, I think that this push is going to be a lot more successful for us. So, we're going to go drop our Mega Minion right on top of his Mega Minion. We're going to be dropping our Bandit. And we're going to be dropping a Poison to just just to completely encapsulate the Electro Wizard, both of the Princes. And this is probably going to be a good game, guys. All it takes is one big push. The Golemites are tanking for everything. That's all she wrote, guys. That's going to be a good game. Well played, and good luck in the rest of your challenge. All right, guys. So we got a game against Nicholas from Munich Army. We're going to be dropping our Goblin Hut as our initial starting play, and we're going to see what he's up to. So he's not dropping anything. He's leaking a little bit of Elixir, dropping an Ice Wizard. So this could be a Graveyard deck. It could be an Expo deck, but it's definitely going to be a defensive deck. So after seeing the Poison, probably going to be looking like a Graveyard deck. Could be some really whack Giant deck with Ice Wizard, but... <laughs> most okay so it might actually yeah it's probably gonna be graveyard could also be golem maybe with a baby dragon no this is definitely gonna be graveyard since he's dropping the knight as well if he does run anything different than that i would be completely just taken back so electric wizard is gonna go finesse the baby dragon 
having the Electro Wizard counter push for us is pretty solid, and he's going to go in for a log. So he's definitely going to go have NATO in this deck. He's having poison, so he's going to have multifarious spells. So at least three spells. We've seen log, we saw poison, and we know for a fact that he's going to have NATO after we saw an Ice Wizard and then a Baby Dragon. It just doesn't make sense to not have NATO in that deck. So Probably going to have Graveyard as well, so he'll have four spells in this deck with a Tombstone. So it's a really hard deck for him to cycle with. As soon as he goes, yep, so he's going to go in with the Baby Dragon as soon as possible. We're going to go in for a Poison on top of the Graveyard. I really like having Poison in this Giant, or in this Golem deck. Most Golem decks are not having Poison at the moment, but I feel like against Graveyard, you really need Poison. So that's why I put in Poison in this deck, and as you guys can see, it works out pretty well. Imagine you had Double Prince, and you're like, okay, I have a really clunky Double Prince Golem deck, and I don't have any answers to Graveyard. Uh, I don't really know how that works out for them in a lot of situations. I feel like they kind of have to take a tower, and if they don't, then they just automatically lose. And when you're rocking into a Ice Wizard and when you're rocking into an Ice Wizard, Baby Dragon, NATO, Tombstone deck, it's very hard to break through. So you're just putting all of your eggs in one basket, whereas I get so many more pushes going off because I just have a lot better capability of defending. So we're going to go in for the Dark Prince, we're going to go in for the Mega Minion. And those skeletons are doing a lot of work, so we're going to go zap those. We don't actually have any other great way of killing them. We don't really want to go in for a zap, or we don't really want to go in for a poison on top of the tombstone or anything. We're just going to be stacking up as many units as possible. And the Dark Prince Bandit combination, guys, it is just so annoying for your opponent to deal with. We're just going to be stacking up Goblin Huts. We're not even going to go in for a poison. You guys are probably wondering, why are you not going for a poison? I kind of like playing safe, guys. It's not worth it. I'd rather just play safe, steadily win this game, instead of potentially throwing it away. GCs, it's all about momentum, and if you're ahead, I like to get further and further ahead. We're going to be dropping our Bandit, and we're just going to be continuously dropping the Spear Goblin Huts, waiting for our moment to shine, and <laughs> there's, there's no way for this man to break through. As long as he goes in for like, yeah, there's absolutely no way. He's going in for a Poison. That means that he's there's no way he's going in for a Graveyard. We're just going to go for a Golem at the bridge, keeping the Electro Wizard alive as long as possible. Made him go and drop a uh, log. We're going to go in for a poison in this situation, actually. I know that he's just down so much elixir, and he's on the back foot, so that we would, we would actually be able to cycle back to another poison in time for his graveyard, if he's even able to go for a graveyard. He's just not in the mindset to go in for a graveyard. He's trying to defend his tower, but the bandit dashes in, and that's going to be a good game. Nicholas is laughing because that's all he could do in that situation. And that's actually where I'm going to end today's video. Guys, if you did not know already, the pinned comment is always going to be the deck that I play in each video. So check it out. Try the deck out in GCs. It's a 12 win GC deck that I just threw together today. It's really solid, and I've been liking it a lot. Thanks for watching. Thanks for chilling with me, and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Peace out, guys.